Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and I'm here with my co-host, Jeff Kelly. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship product. We go out to the events where all the t important tech events are going on. We like to interview the tech athletes. We extract the signal from the noise. We've been saying that since 2010, uh, so we didn't steal that from Nate Silver. But uh, we're here with Tom Walker, who's the CFO of Tableau. For m many of you know, but Tableau recently IPO'd. Uh, it's not, it wasn't really a great year for IPO in the last 12 months for tech IPOs, but certainly has been for a few notable companies, Tableau being one of them. Tom Walker, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so we're here at the Tableau Customer Conference. It's my first uh, you know, TCC, mm -hmm. the hashtag of course, TCC13. Um, it's pretty impressive, uh, the customer stories. As we were talking off camera, we interviewed, I don't know, Jeff and I, 10 customers yesterday. The story is the same. It's passion around data. They mm -hmm. love data. They're struggling with Excel. They're, slowed down by traditional BI to sort of invoke a <laughs> Christian Charbot methodology. <laughs> methodology. So, um, what do you think about the conference here? Give us your impressions. Oh, it's great. It's wonderful. We love this. Every year it's one of our, it's our, it's our tent pole event. We have a great time. It's great to have the customers and interact with them. Um, and as you mentioned, our products are used by everybody. So our whole entire product mission is to help people see and understand data. And so what that allows, and it's all people and it's all data. So you've, you've talked to different people from different industries, different functional areas. It's just amazing the passion that they have when they can unlock their kind of skills on the data that they're working with in their company. So it's, it's one of these, it's just a great event every it, year. It's kind of, a, it's been across the board. It was interesting, the spectrum of folks that we interviewed, you know, former Excel users who were like, let's say power Excel users, mm -hmm. or guys that, you know, were deep into BI, or other folks that were just inserted, just love data. Mm -hmm. um, it really is, is, is all over the place. So um, that, that was impressive to us. So I want to turn to the, uh, the, 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 the big news, of course, earlier you know, th this year, you guys did, did an IPO. Mm -hmm. um, that was you know, a huge milestone uh -huh. for, for a company, obviously. Yep. Uh, talk about that a little bit and, and the, the success of that IPO. I know you're not done yet, you got a lot of work to do, but just <laughs> take us back a little bit. Okay. And, uh, what was that like? Absolutely, yeah, it's just another chapter in the Tableau story. So it was a wonderful event. We were, you know, we were able to bring uh, uh, over 70 people, uh, 70 employees with us to the New York Stock Exchange to celebrate with us on that day. Um, and so we were also webcasting it around the globe to all of our employees. So it was, ju it was a really fun event. Everybody had a great time with it. Um, but like you mentioned, it's just another chapter in the Tableau story. So I've been with Tableau nine years and we've been, um, so we've been working at this for a long time. One of the things Christian likes to say is, you know, I uh, worked my whole life to be an overnight success. So that, that's the Tableau story. We've been working on this for a very long time. And so, uh, it, but it was, it was a lot of fun and it was obviously well received. I think uh, people just like our investors, just like our customers, uh, most of our investors are our customers, you know, they understand what we're trying to do and what our technology is bringing to people. Well, congratulations, so, Thank you. by the way. Appreciate so, that. So you guys um, now are in a good position. A lot of times when companies do IPOs, I mean, I've been watching this market for years, they'll get an infusion of cash. You guys got over $200 million in, in, in cash and equivalents now, which is mm -hmm. great, nice, strong balance sheet. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, CEOs and CFOs will sort of hold on to it and say, okay, now we're just, it, we're risk averse. We don't want to, mm -hmm. you know, m make any big moves. You guys, at least to the street, have somewhat of a different posture. You're, you're sending the message that we are going to continue to invest. We're going to hire people. Mm -hmm. uh, people are our major expense. We, mm -hmm. are, we see an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I want you to talk about that l a little bit because underneath all that is the inference anyway from me that you've got a, you believe that you have a large total available market ahead of you that you mm -hmm. want to go after. Mm -hmm. Okay, absolutely. so yeah. you see a, a, a big potential ahead of you. I want, wonder if you could talk about that. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, at our core, we're a product company. We're a software company. Product is at the heart of everything we do. So, you know, our R&D ratios are higher than, than normal companies, but we invest in our product and in innovation. It's one of the things we're going to continue to do. It's our secret sauce, if you will. It, it's what we do. Um, and so the uh, investment strategy, at least in the short term and the mid term, uh, is going to be investing, not only in R&D resources to keep in innovating and keeping our lead in our product, 
uh, innovation, but also uh, in sales and marketing efforts. So we're expanding internationally. Uh, historically, uh, international sales have been less than 20%, so there's a huge opportunity for us to expand there. Um, uh, and we're expanding into the channel. So historically, 25% of our revenues have, or less than 25% of our revenues have come from the channel. So those are two huge opportunities to continue to invest in, along with the product. Uh, so I wonder if you talk about the international opportunity, because uh, I've done, personally, I've done nation building, and okay. it's not an easy task. Yeah. There's a lot of diversity around the world. It's expensive, but of course the opportunities are large. So, so at what point, I mean, you guys are growing faster mm -hmm. overseas than you are in North America. Mm -hmm. Have you started that process in earnest? Are you still trying to shore up the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the U.S. new hires? Can you talk about the, the international expansion plans a little bit? Sure, so, so we're hiring across the board, both U.S. and international, but international specific, we're not starting from a flat start, right? We, we've been actually doing this. We've been over in Europe. Uh, since 2010, we've had an office over there, so we're just expanding our efforts over there, and it just keeps going. Um, with, re with respect to Asia Pacific, we've been over there uh, since la the beginning of last year, so we're just continue to expand. Now we have an office in uh, Singapore, we have one in Tokyo, um, and we're uh, going to open an office up in Australia. And so there's just it's just a huge opportunity, and our, our products are delivered electronically, so we you know you can download them anywhere in the world in 90 seconds. So it, it, it's a very efficient business model and, and a good way to reach our customers. So we basically look where the, the uh, trial activity or the, the, uh, the lead flow is coming in from and then it, it, it's pretty obvious where we need to put offices and that's, that's kind of what we've been doing. I want to come back to the, to the uh, Tableau as a public company for a minute. And by the way, I the, the symbol, if you don't, didn't know, is, is data. It's a great symbol. Here you guys <laughs> have fun with it too. Yeah. So um, I want to talk about M&A. Obviously you can't talk about specific companies that, that mm -hmm. you, would, you would target, but when companies go public, you know, it used to be they would use stock as acquisition currency. Uh -huh. You see that less and less now. You see in more deals that are, that are cash deals mm -hmm. after you know, the market you know, goes up and down, and that, I'm sure that'll, that'll go in cycles. I wonder, generally, if you could make some ob observations about M&A, public companies, mm -hmm. uh, what are you saying about M&A in, in, in your future, and mm -hmm. if you could just talk about that a little bit. Sure, so historically, we haven't been very acquisitive. We've never right. acquired a company or any technology, so um, we've built our technology from the inside out, if you will, uh, and so, and that's, that's kind of our primary focus. And that's not to say that we won't be opportunistic if we, if we see opportunities for technology that would be complementary to ours. Um, but it's not, it's not in the front brain. What we're doing is you know, helping people see and understand data, our products, the vision that our, uh, uh, Chris Stolte, our chief development officer, and the development team have put out is pretty clear. So we're, we, we see the roadmap uh, very, very clear with what we want to do with the technology. Um, but if we can find you know, tuck-in acquisitions, we, we would most likely do that. But there's nothing on the radar for that. That's not, it hasn't been our nature, and, and I, I don't see anything in the, in the current future. Well, you're growing so fast right now, it's really not, uh, it's not an imperative that you yeah. start acquiring. <laughs> um, so I want to talk a little bit more about the, the total available market opportunity, because sure. it feels like you're just scratching the surface. When you, when you look at the penetration and the adoption of products like yours, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's relatively low if you discount the fact that everybody uses Excel. Uh -huh. but, but what you guys do is dramatically different than what I can do with Excel, and Excel's got some attributes that I can't do with Tableau. So, yeah. So I wonder if you could talk about the, the TAM. How do you guys look at the total available market? Sure, so it's, uh, industry looks at it. You know, uh, the traditional BI industry would be, uh, as Gartner uh, quotes it, is about 13 billion. Um, so that's the traditional BI. That's not including the Excel users, right? That's just the, the stack players, if you will, uh, of the traditional BI vendors that were mostly developed in the 90s. Um, and so that is part of our TAM. The other part of our TAM, as you mentioned, is the Excel users. The other part of our, and so it's a huge population of information workers that we're trying to tap, um, but we don't need to go after people that know what BI is, right? Most people have questions with their data, and that's, that's our TAM. Helping people see and understand their data and our products allow them to do it quicker, and that's pretty much touching any information, information worker on the globe. Great, I know Jeff Kelly wants to jump in here. I've been sure. dominating the conversation. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> quite right. Yeah, Tom, thanks for joining us. Um, so I wanted to start kind of on a macro level. Sure. Um, from my perspective, so you know, we see uh, you know, IT spending is certainly impacted by the global economy. Yeah. Um, you know, we've been through a rough several years, uh, mm -hmm. of course, here in the U.S. and around the world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some of our, our friends at uh, Gartner and some other uh, analyst firms are predicting total IT spending to kind of start to rebound next year. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I'm curious, how does the global economic environment affect a company like Tableau, uh -huh. who's going in, I think you said on your, on your earnings call, most deals are, a typical deal is sub $10,000 to right. start. Mm -hmm. So you're not necessarily going in with you know, multi-million dollar deals, you're going in mm -hmm. with relatively smaller deals to start. Mm -hmm. How does the global uh, economy impact a company like yours mm -hmm. versus maybe you know, some of the, the the larger companies, IBM's, SAP's of the world, who are going in with much larger mm -hmm. kind of uh, deals, much, I assume, uh, compared to yours, a longer sales cycle. Mm -hmm. um, what's your take on that? Yeah, so uh, I, the t my take on that is, is it's kind of interesting. When com in a downturn, companies need to answer questions more uh, than they did in the, in the upturn, if you will. It's a lot easier when things are going up, but when things are going down, people do have to answer questions with their, with their data. And so, uh, uh, our products are perfect for that. Our pricing is perfect for that. It, it helps people get in, and I think it's one of the things our customers love most about our model, is you can get in small. You can get in sub 10,000. Our average order size is less than $10,000. Uh, and so you can get in small and expand over time so when you need it. And that, I mean, the, the key is customers are needing to answer you know, questions, mm -hmm. using our products to do that, and then expanding and, and buying more as, as, they, as they see the need. So it's, it's a good model. Um, it's not insulated to global economy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, there's macro trends out there, um, but what our products help people do is analyze data and, and make good decisions, and mm -hmm. so it, uh, we've done pretty well. So and then in terms of the mix of your customer base, so you've got the land and expand strategy, yep. as, as Dave alluded to, um, but you know, certainly uh, as you look to expand, you're going to look for larger deals as well. Yep. Um, how do you see that mix of kind of land and expand your current customers versus expanding to new customers? I mean, the old uh, you know saying is that you, you make you make more money on your existing customers mm -hmm. traditionally than than acquiring new ones. Yep. Um, how do you see that balance playing out as time progresses? I think you added about 1,500 customers yeah. last quarter, yep. um, but you also expanded to some big big customers. I think Google being one of them. So. Mm -hmm. How do you see that balance between driving, rev in terms of revenue, uh, the land and expand, mm -hmm. uh, versus kind of acquiring new customers? How do you see that changing over time? Yeah, so both are critical. They're, they're two of the three key drivers that we have is acquiring new customers. So you're right, we, we added over uh, 1,500 uh, customer accounts in, in uh, Q2. So that's going to continue. We have a, actually part of our sales team is focused just on customer acquisition. Um, and then the other part of the team is focused on expanding the deals or, or expanding the customer uh, penetration. And so um, ha it will, uh, what's going to happen is the acquisition business, the new license business, is going to be a smaller percentage of the overall pie as the existing base gets larger and larger, mm -hmm. but both are going to continue to grow healthy. And so uh, no matter domestic or international, it's the same strategy because uh, it doesn't matter customers, small, big, uh, big and small, they basically like to do the same thing. They start small, expand, find value, find productivity gains inside their organization, and then expand. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it, it's an interesting model that scales all types of industries and all types of companies. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, one more question, I'll let Dave jump back in. I know he's got plenty more <laughs> questions, but um, another uh, thing that interests me is uh, hiring. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, you're, you're, gonna, you're on a growth trajectory, you're going to mm -hmm. need to hire. Yeah. Um, Tableau is well known for kind of the culture inside the company being, uh, yeah. you know, very passionate people. A lot of your uh, employees are actually former customers that uh, yep. kind of come enam enamored with Tableau, yep. wanted to join the company. Yep. Um, you know, last quarter, uh, you mentioned in the call, you didn't quite hire, I think, as aggressively as you planned. Or it was a little slower than you expected. Yep. Uh, I wonder if that is because you are so selective about the type of people you want to bring into Tableau and how that will impact your potential growth uh, mm -hmm. going forward. Mm -hmm. um, how do you keep that kind of a focus on the type of people you want to bring in, but also you know, you've got to grow at a certain level to keep up with customer demand? Yeah, so talking about you know, hire, uh, hiring our customers, if you will, so I, I, bought tab I bought the first copy of Tableau in December of 2003. So I guess I, I was the first customer <laughs> that Christian acquired. Um, so, uh, but uh, from the hiring pace is what we, uh, what we like to do is, you know, for the last six quarters, we've hired a, a, about 100 people per quarter. And so we want to, you know, we're going to continue to hire uh, at a pretty robust pace. Um, but as I mentioned on the earnings call, you know, we didn't hire as many as, as, we, as we wanted to. Um, and, and we'll continue to do We're not going to lower the bar, if you will. Uh, it's pretty important. I, th I think uh, you guys have met Christian, so you know we're on a mission. We're a mission to help people see and understand data. Uh, from the development side to the sales side and marketing side, operation side, which I'm responsible for, everybody who we hire has to be in a, on that mission. And so uh, we are selective, we're, we're very selective, and, uh, and we like people who we like to work with, quite frankly. So um, uh, we'll continue to do that, but um, we're not going to lower, lower the standards in any way, shape, or form. So. Well, you've got a great talent pool, obviously, where you yeah. are in the, in the yeah. Northwest, right? I mean, I'm clearly Amazon and Microsoft and other great companies up right. there. So, um, but, but you can only hire so fast, and if you, especially if you're going to be selective. And yep. uh, 
And, and that's, a, that's a challenge for, for any company, the human resource capital management. But I want to come back to um, the company uh, mm -hmm. itself. I've said this week, I put you, I, two companies I love, Workday and ServiceNow, um, as, as very successful IPOs, ones that we watch, they're growing very, very fast, they got fantastic leadership, um, and, and I put you guys in a similar category, but for different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, those guys have great products and they're disrupting with an online you know, SaaS model. Mm -hmm. You guys have great products and you're disrupting in other ways. And now you have a, 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 a SaaS model, mm -hmm. but you've, sort of downplayed it mm -hmm. a little bit, saying, you know, it's not going to be a major meaningful contributor for some time, you haven't mm -hmm. specified that time. But you've also said that it's, you see it as complementary, mm -hmm. you know, not dilutive. What gives you confidence of, 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 of that fact, and, and mm -hmm. why do you see it as, as, as incremental to your existing you know, served market? Yep. It's a distribution platform. So, that, you know, people have a lot of data behind the firewall, so our on-premise software is not going to go anywhere uh, anytime anytime soon, so it's, the focus is you've got a ton of data behind the firewall, you're going to need our on-premise products. Now, some people want to have stuff in the cloud, run, run their businesses on cloud offers and like Workday, right? And so, and actually Tableau, we run our, our, our company on cloud offerings too. And so, w with that, it's very, very complimentary to be able to connect up to cloud sources or to do things in an agile, self-service, fast um, uh, fashion because, uh, you know, if our, our customer account base is about 13,500, that's how many customer accounts we have, uh, approximately a third are server users. So the majority is desktop users. So the online version, whether it's on-premise or on, on demand, the online complements it and opens it up because some of our users aren't using our server product. But now they're able to, you know, our operations team can provision uh, uh, online account in about 60 seconds. So it's just, it's amazing, you know, our customers don't have to worry about the IT headache or anything like that. So, um, so far, it's early, and that's why we've, we haven't downplayed it. We're very, very excited about it, but it's early. You know, it'll take, like anything, it'll take time to, to grow, and so we've got several hundred customers thus far, um, and they, you know, the, the traction breaks into three buckets, right? We've got brand new customers to Tableau, is one bucket, it's a good sized bucket. We've got existing customers that use desktop, but they haven't used server, and then we have a, a, a portion of those, uh, another portion that is uh, server customers that have downloaded uh, uh, our on-premise product, and they also have the um, on-demand product. And it's two different groups in the company. So one group's got a lot of data, huge big data behind the firewall. They're using our on-premise product. And then another department that doesn't have IT resources just fired up a, a Tableau Online Demand uh, uh, version and they're off and running very quickly. So. Yeah, we had uh, Manpower on yesterday and, and she was telling us that she didn't want anything to do with installing IT, so they yeah. went with the, uh, the online version. Yeah. Uh, I would think smaller companies as well, it's going to appeal to them. They, they're, um, I think most small companies believe that security in your cloud is better than security on their <laughs> premise. So, yeah. so I would think that's a, also a, a, a big opportunity. If I ask, usually when I ask CFOs or senior executives in, in, in successful companies like yours, what keeps them up at night, what worries them most, you're going to tell me execution. Mm -hmm. I mean, that really is the, the big thing. So I'm not going to ask you that. Uh, but I, I want to pick up on something that Nate Silver said. He talked, he gave the example of uh, Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. And it was essentially he was talking about a blind spot that the U.S. had. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say because it's a blind spot, but are there any blind spots that, that sort of potential blind spots that worry you, that mm -hmm. you feel like Tableau you know, really needs to address, that you might talk about you know, to your people, to your customers, in your own head? Yeah. What might those blind spots be? It's actually an interesting question, but uh, again, coming back to TCC, right? Here we are at the customer conference. We're very much in tune with our customers. You know, and actually everybody inside the company also uses the product, so all the employees are actually customers too because we're just, we use the product every day, so we try and figure this out and, and evolve the product and our innovation helps drive that to kind of avoid uh, uh, blind spots. Um, but, you know, we're just, we're, I, I think one of the challenges, and it's not execution, it's just making sure you prioritize, right? And those priorities can change over time, but it's, it's keeping everybody, as we're onboarding everybody focused. Um, there's, there's only 24 hours in a day, I wish there was more, but you know, there's only 24 hours in a day, and uh, keeping everybody focused and kind of rowing the boat in the same direction, that's, that, that's one of the challenges that, that, that yes, I, I So we on. have, uh, actually, we, we can help you with that problem. Jeff and I, and the SiliconANGLE Wikibon team, we have a, a mantra which is, work half day every day. Pick whatever <laughs> 12 hours you want, and <laughs> yeah, start your day. But, uh, <laughs> I thought you were going to help me with like 48 hours, <laughs> yeah. some type of deal on 48 hours in a day. 12 hours is actually a pretty light day for it. <laughs> um, that's excellent. Um, okay, so uh, really appreciate you coming on, Tom. Okay. Uh, fantastic story, really, you know, we'll be watching. Congratulations on all the success, the IPO, the, the, the great customer enthusiasm. You guys are a customer-driven company. Absolutely. I mean, 
kind of, it reminds me of Jeff Bezos saying, hey, there's, there's customer-driven companies and there's competitor-driven companies. Mm -hmm. you know, Amazon's a customer-driven, you yeah. feel like you're a, a oh. customer-driven company. We are here for our customers. Yeah. That and is our purpose. Yeah, and you could be both. I mean, yeah. a company like EMC is both. They're yeah. fanatically customer-driven, but they're competitive yeah. like crazy. Yeah. Oh, we like to there. compete, but we're yeah. here for our customers. <laughs> yeah. We compete for our customers. Good deal. All right, Tom, it was a pleasure meeting you. Thank really. you so Thank much, you for I appreciate coming it. On. Thank you for having me. All right, keep it right on. there, everybody. We'll be right back. Uh, Nate Silver is up next uh, here at the bottom of the hour, so tweet your questions. Uh, I'm at D. Vellante, and keep it right there. We're right back. <laughs>